Hi, and welcome to Homestead Diary. My name is Amber, and I was actually reading the Bible, and then I'm going to tell you a story. So, it's Luke 8, uh, 19, um, on through, I think it's about 30, so it's a little bit of a longer passage, but it's pretty cool because it relates to my life, and it's always nice to see things in the Bible that relate to your life at least a past experience that you'll hear about in a couple of minutes. Then came unto his mother and his brethren and could not come unto him for the press. And it was told to him by certain which thy mother and thy brethren stand out, desire to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went to and into his ship and his disciples, and he said unto them, Let's go over to the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and they were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he rose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased and there was calm, a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, wondering, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the wind and water, and they obey him. So that's through 25. So I actually was visiting my father when he was getting married to his second wife after my mother. And while on the lake, uh, there was a sailboat that we used, and my husband and I and our daughter Winter went out on the water, and my niece and nephew also went with us. And while we were out there on the other side of the lake, the wind started storming, and it was pouring down the rain, and the kids were happy when it was a super, super sunny day. But once it started getting cold, we didn't have extra clothing. We weren't, we weren't planning, actually, to be caught out in a storm. And so I started... Um, dancing with them and like acting like I was moving the the um clouds and just getting them getting their body moving like keeping them warm and keeping their spirit up by singing and and John was working on getting us back to camp as soon as possible so we could warm up but I was afraid of like you know depending on how long it took or whatever just hypothermia and just the kids being really not having a good time so I mean we danced we sang and um it was just it was a beautiful thing and the sky did part and we were blessed and it was amazing but when we arrived back my my niece told her mom which is my sister and Charity thought that I was doing some sort of Wiccan chant or um like devil worshiping or you know something like that which I'm not saying um Wiccan um ideas of you know northeast south and west and you know like you know earth air fire water you know those type of things I mean I'm an ecologist and so I believe in cycles of the earth and stuff but I also don't say that um that I am the one who uh, parted the the clouds or made the sun come out or anything that was not at all uh, what I was going for. I was just trying to keep the kids warm and um, in positive spirits. Um, and of course, God made the sun shine again and warmed us up. And same thing in this Bible ver verse is they're saying that <clears throat> they're saying that um, that he uh, read the reads the Bible and he hears the word of God and he does it. And so when you know the the sky parts, it is not. Uh, so evil it's just it's God you know listening and and to him in his prayers I mean it's a two-way street and I hope everyone um that is listening to this understands that it's a conversation with God and it's a relationship with God and that he does do things for us and you know we may not understand some of the things that that he does um and it may seem like he uh, has abandoned us but you know he said I will never forsake thee, you know, I mean, I, I am the same today, tomorrow, and forever. It's like, he will always be there for us, even when we think that he's not. And so, 
these, are, you know, potentially are the times of tribulation, even though we're not supposed to be discussing the time, because the t exact time is up to God. But if you feel like you are going through uh, tribulations and, and tests and, um, you know, they may throw you in jail or they may kill you, but that's what being a martyr for God is. And that's, you know, people are in, in jail right now and bless them for keeping the word of God and representing us. And I just feel so blessed that people are willing to do that for God. <laughs> and, and, you know, if, if we are put in that position, I hope that we are that strong for God and that we would not forsake him because that is, I mean, where God believes that we have a crown waiting for us in heaven and that it's not about riches. It's not about crowns or royalty or the stuff we get. It's about saying, this is right and this is not right. And <laughs> we we were supposed to have learned that in kindergarten. And, and it's not about equality necessarily. It's about it's about us having to meet God halfway. We are supposed to cut part of the tree down in order to get the tree to fall. It is not equality like, oh, well, there's 300 trees and there's 300 people. And so one person is going to go around and cut all those trees for all 300 because the other 299 uh, are taking a nap or they're, they're, they don't want to get blisters on their hands or things like that. No, God will have that one person cut half their tree and then God will help them with their other half. And the other 299 trees will stay standing and he'll say, you might not have wood for the winter time. You might not be warm, but my, per my disciple or my um, follower, my child of Christ will be warm because they tried. Because it's not about everyone gets the same amount. It's about you have to put in effort. You reap what you sow. And here it says here in eight, um, eight, what is it? Nine. Let me see where it is. It, uh, okay. So Luke eight, um, verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God and you have to plant it and you have to grow it and you have to nurture it and you have to try and it takes work and and you can't let it just fall into the brambles and get caught up in worldly things you have to actually stay away from the sin as much as possible and stay with the Lord but when you do, you know, if your if your wheat falls to the wayside on good ground and you've stayed with God, he will make that seed turn into thousands, thousands of plants that make thousands of seed, which makes thousands of loaves of bread, hundreds of thousands, and they will procreate more and more and more seed and more and more and more food and more godly people to feed the people that are in need. Now, if of those 300 people, there is 100 that are needy, and then the other two, the other 200 help that 100 that need help with their food or their firewood. But some government agency is not supposed to come in and say, you know, you need to make um, food for them. And it's for people who are physically capable and not willing to work. That's the difference. We take care of those who are in need. We do not take care of those who are lazy. Please understand that this is God's word and you need to follow it too. Or else you will not pass the tests of tribulations and you will not go to heaven. But it's not my place to judge you, you know. And so I am just warning you that there is other ways to share and partake in community and practice what you preach. You can't break the commandments and then act like you're doing something holy. <laughs>
<laughs> it doesn't work that way. You can't use the word of God against uh, against God. I mean, you can't steal and um, bear false witness to your neighbor and then say you're doing it for the good of the whole um, and that you're doing the work of God. It's not, it doesn't work like that. Um, yeah. So please understand that you need to read the Bible and find your own life story in that. Uh, see yourself in God's word. Remember God's word and have it work through your daily life. And be around those who understand it also so you can have conversations about what it means to you and um, how it's working in your in your heart. So stay true to yourself no matter how hard it is. Amen. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day.